doing? I'm trying to record a podcast. Hey, everybody. It's your natural dog with Angela Ardolino, and I'm excited about my guest today. She is Dr. Christina Chambreau. Um, she is a uh, on the Council of Elders for the Association of Holistic Veterinarians, um, which is a uh, wonderful organization who has an annual event that we attend every year so we can go see all of our holistic, favorite holistic and integrative vets. And I met her one year. I'll never forget the first year I met her because um, I was learning about uh, homeopathic medicine and I remember sitting in a lecture and I had no idea what the heck they were saying. And when I raised my hand, they looked at me like I was a crazy person. And this is what she is. She's a homeopathic vet and has been for over 30 years. So I was like, what the heck is it? And she took the time to explain it to me. Um, and she's a wonderful holistic. I love her. She's so filled with information. And I wanted to talk to her mostly about how we have this huge shortage of not only veterinarians, but holistic and integrative veterinarians, which practice um, more holistic approaches to health and wellness, which as you know, is what I'm really into. So join our conversation. It's gonna be a good one with Dr. Christina Chambrow. This is Odie, my baby old man, AKA Barky Von Schnauzer. He's 11 years old and the love of my life. So Odie's favorite thing is to run up the stairs at night when we go to bed. And I noticed a couple years ago that he would stop midway up. And that's when I knew he was suffering from arthritis and joint pain. So the only treatments that I was being offered were harmful prescription drugs that cause liver damage and suppress the immune system. And I just wasn't willing to do that for my senior dog. And full spectrum CBD oil was the only thing that worked. I would give it to him and literally within 15 minutes, he was puppy-like again. I could see that he wasn't in pain, he wasn't panting, he was running up the stairs. So on Odie, I use Ease, which is a 550 milligram full spectrum CBD oil with frankincense essential oil, turmeric and hemp oil, and it's great for arthritis, aches and pains, and allergies. No one likes to see their dog suffer. I know I didn't. And to be able to find an all natural product that doesn't cause additional harm and helps them is a lifesaver for me. And it brings me so much peace of mind. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. Okay, Dr. Christina, you know I brought you on today because I wanna talk about a huge issue that I've been seeing going on for at least the past two years I feel like it's gotten a lot worse during the pandemic, and that is the need and desire to find a holistic or even an integrative veterinarian and not being able to. So even where I live, I have one choice. And of course, she's booked out forever. Um, And I don't think people understand why this is happening or um, I don't even think, of course I didn't, so I'm speaking for a lot of people, but I don't think people understand that you go to vet school, you get out of vet school, and you're a conventional veterinarian, correct? Right. If you want to learn or do anything else past that, you have to go educate yourself and further educate and get certifications and learn more so that you do learn about diet and nutrition um, and important things like that and all of these amazing holistic modalities that exist that conventional trained doctors know nothing about because they just never were taught about it. And that's why one of the things I tell people all the time is please be gentle and nice to your conventional veterinarian, even though they're not always gentle and nice to you because they can be very opinionated. But as an ambassador and desire for holistic, it's one of the things that you can do to help get veterinarians maybe interested and starting. Many, many veterinarians begin because a client says, you know, I tried this and some veterinarians go, well, and others go, wow, your dog's much better. So, And those are the type of vets that we want as pet parents is that, hey, I read about this. Do you know anything about it? And for, of course, you know what I do. I do CBD dog health um, and have my own uh, formulations and tinctures that I created. But it was funny that, um, you know, vets just weren't open to it. And not until, and that's exactly what happened, not until a pet parent came in 
and the tumor was gone, and the vet said, uh, how, what, what did you do? And they're interested in hearing more, and that's how I got to meet most of the holistic, wonderful vets that I know, or integrated vets that I know, is because the, a pet parent came in and said, I tried this and it worked. But they should. We have the expectation that we should be able to come to our vets and say, hey, I've heard about CBD. Does it work? I've heard about chiropractic. Does it work? And just because you don't know about it, say, nope. Or how many vets are still telling, conventional vets are still telling pet parents that it'll kill them instead of, I don't know. Well, I've one, heard great things about it, and here's here where you can find more information kind of thing. Well, here you've got to realize a couple of things. One is when you go through vet school, you're force-fed so much information that you forget a lot of it. Um, in first year, you're taught in immunology class that viral vaccines protect for a lifetime. That's like the Stemper and Parvo. But by the time you're in the clinics and told to give them every year or every three years, most people are still doing it every year. You've forgotten what you learned um, because right. it's so push, so hard. And then the second thing is particularly more recently, as more and more people have gotten pets um, during the, the pandemic, they're swamped, they're busy. And even, I mean, I started working for veterinarians in Japan. I was working for the local base vet when I was 12 years old. And wow. it was not busy at all. It was really easy. But in high school, I was working in New Jersey for a veterinarian. So I continued doing that, having decided at that point to become a vet. And back then, we were on call 24 seven. There were no emergency clinics. So we did cows, horses, dogs, cats, and we were on call. And then that slowly shifted over the years as it has in human medicine with increasing number of specialists. So I started doing homeopathy in 1982 because a client came to me and said, please send my blood results to so-and-so vet who's doing homeopathy. And I went, What's homeopathy? What's that? <laughs> and then that vet sent me some remedies, and it cured a cat who had been on awesome. antibiotics for three years with bladder problems. And so awesome. then I went on to teach, and I have spoken at conventional vet conferences for decades now, ever since, oh, 87, 88, uh, all around the world. And there's just something about veterinarians where it, so many of them think they're right and they want you to do exactly what they say. Now, often it's because of their experience. They've had 15 cats in a row come down with upper respiratory, so they want you to vaccinate for that. So because of this, nowadays, partly because of the work I've done and many others like me in terms of speaking, there are a lot of holistic veterinarians out there. And there are also a number of conventional veterinarians who are at least open to working with you. And a lot of it has to do with you. You, Amen. the pet parent, if you go in saying, yes, I feed raw, Yes, I want to use CBD. Yes. Well, what do you mean you're not going to let me do that? Well, you're wrong. Uh, that's not going to work the best. So here's a what I like to recommend is that people start right now researching in a two-hour radius all of the veterinarians that exist in that two-hour radius. I think it's so funny you said two hours because my vet is two hours away. <laughs> And I live in a big city, very close to everything, and I drive two hours out into the middle of nowhere to to my four holistic women vets that work in one practice together. And they all have their specialties, and they all share. And not only that, they're next door to a rehab vet who used to work for them, so they even work together. So you've got this whole team of people who are working together to find out what's what they can do to help your animal. But even more important, I'm not, right now, I'm saying research all veterinarians, not just the holistic ones, because okay. 
what you need to do is find somebody within, if possible, 15 minutes for emergencies. And there are now multiple emergency clinics around. So All over you now. want to find the one that's going to work the best for you. Um, so look for referrals. Read what's on the Internet. Don't, you know, I mean, they're disgruntled clients for everything, just like restaurants. I mean, they're, it's a bad clinic. But still, that helps you learn. So I can't help you find your local conventional vet. But what I can say is once you've narrowed it down to maybe you live in a small town and there's only one, or maybe you've got a choice of 10, and you've narrowed it down to four whose website doesn't look too pushy. And here's one clue. Look for veterinary clinics that are not owned by Banfield, VCA, or other corporations. Amen, which is getting harder and harder to do, especially where I live. Well, that will, that actually good things might be happening. I was speaking with a veterinarian recently who's in Colorado, and she has been working for a Banfield hospital and doing integrative medicine there. And she's working. Well, and I know. She's working. And I know with an ben, oncologist. She's working who worked with for VCA. She's yeah. work, but she's doing more. She's working with Banfield, somebody higher up in Banfield, not at the clinic. Um, she's working with this woman to start changing the attitude of Banfield and Banfield's requirements. Um, that would be nice. So, you know, shifts may happen. She said there's some benefits to corporate. So, but in the meantime, until that happens. Look for the ones, particularly look for clinics that have been around a long time. Often, you know, you may not get state of the art and the newest, newest, but you'll get somebody who's willing to work with you and listen to you. And if you need state of the art, you go to a specialist. Right. So for the conventional vets, once you've picked out three or four of them, you can do two things. One is simply make an appointment for a wellness check. And go in and talk to them. What are the receptionists like? What is the text like? What is the vet like? And then if you feel you need to interact more with that veterinarian to find out who they are, invite them to lunch. Because think about it. If you're in the if, if I'm a vet and I'm in the veterinary clinic talking to you, and I'm not super interested in what you're saying. I'm going to be listening to, even if I am really interested, I'm going to be paying attention to how that dog came out of surgery, what's happening to the tech over there, what, who's doing this. So I'm not, it's going to be harder to focus. If you can get them, I mean, how often, but, and nowadays with COVID, it'll be a lot harder. But say you're going to bring a picnic lunch and you'd like to sit outside with them if the weather allows you to do that, um, you know, or you live I in used to give the same advice for parents with their kids. I'm like, you want your kid to be paid attention to in his classroom and never forgotten about? Bring your damn teacher a gift yeah. or volunteer. Yeah. Or do, is there anything I can help with? You literally have to do that once and they're never going to forget that you were the parent that walked up and asked if there was any way that you could help. This is how I could help. Works the same way with our animals. Exactly. I love that. Um, and so suggestion. the next step, and be honest about what you're looking for and what you want. And then the next step is looking at holistic veterinarians. And so that's the next chunk that we'll talk about is how do you find an integrated veterinarian? Almost there are very few 100% holistic veterinarians, except for some phone consulting homeopathic ones. Almost all other holistic veterinarians are really integrated veterinarians, which means, yep, they're trained in conventional. They have an x-ray machine. They have a surgery suite. So they can do things, anything that needs, but they also have a laser. They trained in acupuncture or chiropractic or osteopathic or flower essences, a multiplicity of those. Um, so they're trained in other approaches and they have access to and are trained in conventional medicine as well. So it doesn't matter if you go to an integrative vet or a holistic vet. They both will give what you're looking for. And but uh, you brought up a good point before we got on this show. It's about you. And 
And it's also, you're going to know more about what you want and need for your pet by educating yourself on what you need and want for your pet. So an empowered pet parent, and let me, I don't want anybody to think that this is really hard. Being an empowered pet parent has also made me an empowered human patient. I know how to go in and talk to my human doctor now. I know what to say, I don't want, I do want, can you do this? Those types of things. I know what to ask for before I even walk into my vet office. And we have to take a short break. But when we come back, I want um, to talk about how important that is, that we do understand certain things about our pet's health what we can do to prevent having to go to the vet in the first place. Because this is what you're saying right now is find your emergency vet and then find your integrative vet that you can go to for when small issues so that you have something all re- someone ready when you do have an, that emergency and then someone that you can go to on a regular annual Actually basis. three, emergency okay. vet plus a close by conventional vet for regular things like stool checks and your holistic vet. Now, the holistic vet and the nearby conventional vet may be the same person. Okay, But you might need three. (laughs) Okay, good. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk more about how we can empower ourselves as pet parents to get what we need for our pets when we come back. This is Daisy. She's our 17-year-old rescue, and her owner surrendered her to the veterinarian because she couldn't walk anymore. And the vet gave us a call and we rescued her, brought her to our rescue farm here. We took her off all of her uh, prescription medications. She was having seizures every day, grand mal seizures. She had no hair on her feet, on her tail. And we have her on a CBD regimen and she has come back to life. She's become puppy-like. She runs around and plays and She could live to be 20 years old and live a very long, happy, pain-free life. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. Hello, and we're back with Your Natural Dog with Dr. Christina Chambro. Thank you so much for joining me again. um, The second time I've had you on because I just love the uh, information you share. I also love that you have been practicing for so long that you've been able to watch (laughs) this industry change, what the trends are, and us as pet parents trying to navigate it. But um, we talked about being a empowered pet parent, meaning that we know what we're doing before we even step foot into that vet office um, and trying to find a good vet. You said you just went through something recently where you came to Florida and needed to find a vet for your daughter? Right. So what I'm going to talk... So this is a vet looking for a vet. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to talk now about that piece that we were talking about, finding a holistic vet. Okay. Each of you listening right now could be in totally different places. Many of you are here because you have an animal who's really sick and, and you're looking for anything. Will CBD help my dog? What would help my dog, my cat right now? They're, it's really sick. And so I'm encouraging everyone to take a step back and learn about what I want you to do is start really thinking, using your common sense. Is it better to feed a person processed food twice a day or fresh food? Is it better to use a lot of toxins or avoid the toxins? That sort of thing. So then you know what you're looking for before your animal gets sick. And that was what was true with my daughter. She has a um, service dog that she rescued from somebody uh, who had to get rid of it. Wonderful, wonderful Australian shepherd. And he was, he's fine. He's probably eight or so. And I wanted her to be taking him to a veterinarian who was an integrative practice who did acupuncture or chiropractic or preferably a combination of both. Now, I do homeopathy, but I'm not running a clinic anymore. I'm doing pet health coaching. So I couldn't give her what she needed for her dog. So what I had to do, and this is, we will have a link for you to go Good. to. Thanks. Is, so each veterinarian who decides to learn something holistic learns something different learns a different modality. But many of them learn multiple modalities. 
they can't afford to belong to every single organization that's out there. That's going to make it harder for you. <laughs> and, and that's okay. It's worth spending the time to do it. So in the article link that you'll find, it's about how to select and work with a holistic veterinarian. And you will find a modality, homeopathy. And then we have, this is for worldwide. So there's about four for worldwide different websites to go to. And then there's acupuncture, Chinese medicine. There's four or five websites for that. Then there's chiropractic, osteopathic. So there's websites and you have to go to all of them to find who's in your neck of the woods. So I did that. I looked for about a three town radius, probably a 50 mile, she wouldn't go very far. So I was looking for about probably 20, 20, 25 mile radius. And I came up with, I don't remember exactly, maybe 13 names and oops, here's another big problem. These websites are not kept up current. Which I kind of feel like is a good sign mm. for a true holistic, because they don't have time to do their website. No, 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 that's <laughs> not that website. The organization's oh. Oh. website that is listing the veterinarians are not kept up. So the right. first one okay, I called, got it. the phone number had been disconnected. So I had to Google that veterinarian to see if there was a different phone number and if she was still in the area. The second one I called, the clinic answered and they went, Dr. Who? Oh, oh, I think she was here three years ago. And then the third one I called sounded really good, sounded okay. And um, they were now booking four months out. And then the fourth one I called... So these are the problems. This is what you're going to run into. The fourth one I called said, oh, yes, we have somebody who does acupuncture. And I'm going to myself, okay, that's good. And then I had to find out what kind of acupuncture. So as well, as Angela said, it's really about you taking responsibility for learning about what's needed. So some veterinarians go to a weekend workshop on acupuncture and they are they walk home with give use these five points if there's arthritis use these five points if there's wow. tumor use these five points for this they're not looking at the holistic animal the whole animal they're not thinking holistically now they still could be useful for what you need you exactly. have some really you know what to feed you're avoiding toxins and you need acupuncture on a regular basis, maybe once a season or once a month because you have an agility dog who has a tendency to have a little limp if he doesn't get acupuncture. But with occasional acupuncture, he keeps going. So that person might be fine for you. It took me speaking, calling all 13 until I found one out of the 13 that was close, sounded nice, and then I went and visited the clinic, took the dog, had an exam, and she was wonderful. Awesome. She, but dude, but I that I love that A, we weren't even sure what we were gonna talk about today, and that you went through all of this. This is a vet looking for a vet, and it took her thirteen to find one. So this is why we're doing this show. You guys can't think that it's a pick up the phone call. You have to do your research and you have to know what you want and what you're looking for and what's going to help your pet. And that most. article that we have the link to actually talks about that. And then it also talks about what you can do to help your holistic vet be more helpful for your pet. So it's got more than just those, more than just the links. It's got more information in there for you. And it. One of the most important things that you can do is to start now keeping a journal on your pets. After I'd been in practice about 20 years, people started saying, Dr. Shombro, please write a book. And I went, you know, there's all of these good books. There's tons of so good holistic I books. I'm, I, <laughs> what am I going to add to that? And then I thought, you know what's missing is as a homeopath, I asked for all the symptoms now and in the past, and sometimes it's hard for you to remember them. 
And then I, tr- I give offer a treatment and then I say, what changed? And you go, mm, I'm not sure. So if there's, a, so I decided to create a journal for you. Awesome. So it's a book, the healthy animals journal that's in print, it, like a print book. And then I did healthy dog and healthy cat journal that you can get online, but you can keep a journal yourself. It's simply a matter of writing, doing a timeline. What happened now? And from day one until now, and you continue that timeline and make, especially if you have a sick pet for, especially for sick, but I really want to encourage people to start doing it before you have a sick pet. I know, I know. Really it's really important. Absolutely. Because I can't tell you how many times we'll do um, a consultation for people who want to know whether cannabis is a good option for their pet and how they, how many times they don't know why they're giving a dog a certain medication. Right. Um, why it's, what it's supposed to help and not keeping track. Like uh, I, one of my favorite things is to look at all the records and then be able to go, oh, did it start? And then I'll say to them, hey, did you notice that that seizure started happening after you put the Brevecto on them? Oh, my gosh. Yes. If I because I see you went to the vet here and then they got this and then seizures started to happen. Then they gave you this prescription med, which then caused this to happen. So it is what when you say common sense, I want pet parents to know that, you know, better you can take control of your pet's health. Uh, Now that I know better, I go once a year. I don't even have to go once a year because now I have Zach, who's our chief vet, (laughs) who takes care of my rescue farm. And I got Dr. Urban who comes and helps. So I don't have to go to a vet anymore, Um, except for Nina, who's got to have her specialist. Um, But even if I didn't know all them, I know exactly what to do now and what to look for. And I feel very powerful knowing that. Um, I don't ever have to be in the bind that I was 15 years ago when I had a sick pet and just kept going to the same vet, just doing what they told me and to do. And that's critical. Anytime things aren't working, no matter how nice and polite and loving your veterinarian is, if it's not working, then you need to think about doing something differently. And that's why now what I'm doing is pet health coaching. People call me not knowing what to do next or who to go to. And I actually find the vet for them. I do the work to find the vet that's going to work the best for them. May take two or three tries, but tell them how to do that, how they can get in touch with you. Um, I also know that you're um, involved in another wonderful organization that helps uh, empower us. So how do they get in touch with you? Because that is a wonderful service. Well, we'll be, we'll definitely have the the links for that. And um, so my email is heal by animals at AOL.com or healthy animals at AOL.com. And my website is my healthy animals. Dot com. Awesome. And don't worry, you're going to get like a not secure thing popping up and you're not ordering or paying anything on that site. So don't worry about the not secure. I'm still working with HostGator on it. <laughs> I'm okay, not that awesome. great with computers. So number one is I can help you, but there are the Holistic Actions Academy was founded by a friend of mine and a colleague, Dr. Jeff Feynman, to do just that that you can do it for yourself. So it's a membership site where you can ask all sorts of questions, find articles like the one I just mentioned, have a 15 minute talk with one of us once a month. So um, it's definitely worth checking out holisticactions.com. And if you want to try to do a full membership just for a week to test it out, you can use the code 2BALANCE20 with balance and capitals to do that. Um, awesome. So that's a good offer. But more importantly, I, I just, I really, you know, it's just so important right now because of the COVID that if, if you were wanting, if you think that holistic might be something you'd be interested in, well, what's holistic? You may not be listening, you may be listening to this and not even know that, yes, we can do everything done for people almost everything 
can be done for animals. Some psychiatric, you know, talk therapy may not work for our animals. <laughs> right. Or, or psilocybin. I don't know that yet. I don't know if that'll help them at right, all yet. Right. But so there, you're but, right. But almost anything else you hear of, and so much of it you can do yourself that's 100% That's what I safe. love. Massage, that's what I love. Flower essences. Um, all good for us pressure. and animals. Yep. Um, they particularly important are energy modalities where you don't need to buy anything because you know with what's going on with COVID, we have limited inner, we have limited um, what's it called distribution. So they're empty shelves, and there are times you may call for products you want, even flower essences, and they're not available because they couldn't buy the bottles for them. Yep. Right. So. If you can learn energy, pure energy medicine, you have first aid tools right here with your fingers. So number one for that is Reiki. Number two for that is Eden Energy Medicine. There's Theta Healing, Quantum Healing, Bingston Method, and there's a Dr. Edward in Australia that I'm just starting to research now. Who seem, it seems very powerful. Acupressure, for sure. So all of those, you don't need anything but your hands. So start learning now. And I you love can it. begin learning at Holistic Actions, but there's so many other resources. Again, there are plenty of books that you can get. There's plenty online. Now, when you go online, again, if you're looking for a veterinarian, you may get different opinions about each veterinarian. So you need to take them with a grain of salt and you make up your mind about, right. is this holistic veterinarian working the way you want them to work? But I don't even know anything about holistic. How can I know what I want? Number one, they need to listen to you. Number two, if they are not seeing you in the clinic, if they take your dog or cat in to be worked on in the clinic to be examined, they need to come back out and tell you either by phone, because some of them, I know one veterinarian who's so immunosuppressed, she hasn't left her house in two years, but wow. she talks to her clients by video phone. So they need to talk to you. And if you say, oh, you did acupuncture, can I do acupressure? Will you show me the points? So at your car, they need to show you the points. Or if yep. they're doing video, they bring another dog in and do it and show you the points. So they yep. need to, you need to feel like you're listened to and they are responsive to what you're doing. And now, come in prepared with your questions so that you know what you need the answers to and what you want ahead of time. And a paper That's and right. pencil. That's right. So you can take notes or record so that you don't forget. Absolutely. Okay, we run out of time and we've got a call from a listener that we want to play so that we can answer their question. We're going to play that right now. This is Odie, my baby old man, a.k.a. Barky Von Schnauzer. He's 11 years old and the love of my life. So Odie's favorite thing is to run up the stairs at night when we go to bed. And I noticed a couple years ago that he would stop midway up. And that's when I knew he was suffering from arthritis and joint pain. So the only treatments that I was being offered were harmful prescription drugs that cause liver damage and suppress the immune system. And I just wasn't willing to do that for my senior dog. And full spectrum CBD oil was the only thing that worked. I would give it to him and literally within 15 minutes, he was puppy-like again. I could see that he wasn't in pain, he wasn't panting, he was running up the stairs. So on Odie, I use Ease, which is a 550 milligram full spectrum CBD oil with frankincense essential oil, turmeric and hemp oil, and it's great for arthritis, aches and pains, and allergies. No one likes to see their dog suffer. I know I didn't. And to be able to find an all natural product that doesn't cause additional harm and helps them is a lifesaver for me and it brings me so much peace of mind. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. Ah, oh, thank you. Great well, question. And this is know, all you because I don't know. And I always think that when I see these little Italian greyhounds shaking and or the chihuahua shaking, you're like, are you cold? Are you nervous? But yeah, I love this question. But well, all yours. He, you he came from Italy. You know, it's warm oh. in much of Italy, although they have the Italian oh, like Alps that. as well. 
So often you have to take that into consideration. Um, so I would recommend that you get some books on Chinese food therapy. So the one of the books that's been around forever is Four Paws, Five Directions, Four Paws, Five Directions, which is by that. Cheryl Schwartz. And she talks about who, what type is your more yin or yang, metal, water, fire. And then she gives specific suggestions in terms of foods that you can try. Now, just because she says it doesn't mean it's going to work for your dogs. It might work for one, but not for the other. So another book that I love is um, Fresh Food and Ancient Wisdom. And it's by Ehor, I-H-O-R, Basco, B-A-S-K-O. And he goes through the same, a little bit of that. Now, she goes into acupressure points and things like that. His is just feeding. So he talks about different foods that you can feed. Sometimes being super chilly or super hot, either one, is an early warning sign that the underlying balance is not completely balanced, that there, it's off a little bit. So it's what we call an early warning sign of internal imbalance. And I've got a huge list of those. We've got it on the Holistic Actions website and on my website, like goop in the corner of the eyes or smelly dogs or tartar on the teeth. Healthy dogs don't have that. And so if it's that, just changing the diet may not be enough. But step one is to make sure you're feeding a fresh food diet, that you're using a lot of variety. You're not making a dog food that you feed the same thing day after day after day. One day you feed chicken or for a week you feed chicken, then you feed turkey, then you feed duck. And you pay attention, keeping a journal, with do you notice that when you're feeding different foods, the shivering is less? Then feed more of those foods. I'm and doing that right now with my hot flashes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it was awful last night. Yep. Oh, I had ice cream. Oh, I had... I had that bread. Okay, now I get it. But this is what you're saying is really journaling and paying attention to what's causing it. So if the dog is healthy, let's say pretend they're completely healthy, everything's good, and they're just shivering, are they just cold Well, because they're little skinny dogs? Again, there's it's, it's a, a, a continuum. So if, if the dogs have a super quality of life and... They, he puts on a jacket and they go out and a sweater and they go out and they play and they run and they enjoy being outdoors and they come home and they're fine. Maybe they lay down and take a nap, but they're fine. Then that's just normal. But even playing around with foods might help. However, on the other, on the further of the continuum would be a dog that when it's cold out, it's like, I'm not going to go outside, even if there's a coat on or they go outside because they have to go potty and they're just, you know, they're looking at you beseechingly, please, let's go back in. And therefore, it's something that's affecting their life. So if the quality of life is hindered by anything at all, then it's an indication of imbalance God. rather than a, just a preference. So, for instance, we can have very friendly dogs and we can have grumpy dogs, friendly cats um, hiding cats or sort of standoffish cats. And both can be, all of those can be completely healthy. It's not God. like there's one particular thing, behavior, temperature that's normal. It's a wide range. So you have to look at all the symptoms that are going on and most importantly, the general quality of life. And that's what you want to be looking for when you're working, when you're seeking holistic veterinary care. And at Holistic Actions, Dr. Jeff coined the term BEAM, shot BEAM the light on health. So B for behavior, E for energy, A for appetite, and M for mood. And if whatever treatment is being done for any condition, if your dog or cat is feeling better and feeling happier, you're on the right track. If Love it. the symptom goes away like the itching, but 
oh, they're not feeling as well, or now they're grumpy, or now they're um, licking photographs or has some odd behavior. Wrong, wrong treatment, you need to shift. So it really is, even working with holistic veterinarians, just because we're holistic doesn't mean we're going to get along with you. Just because we're holistic doesn't mean we have the one answer. Just because we're holistic, you know, CBD works for some and doesn't work for every, everybody. And so it's a matter of the wonderful thing is that there are so many different holistic approaches that you can learn yourself and that veterinarians can offer you. And we get new ones every year that I learn about that I never heard about. I mean, you can work with gemstones and put gemstones in your pet's water. And I've seen them turn around, snuffle that, just snuffling. And if you make your own, then you're not contributing to uh, any problems in the environment. You know, so... I love it. I love that you've been able to have so many years of experience and watch how all these things that I, some of them I haven't even heard about. <laughs> but what the best thing is, is that the more you treat the entire animal and look at the whole animal, which is what holistic medicine is all about, the better, um, the better you'll be off because you'll be able to figure out what's wrong by paying attention. We're out of time. Thank you so much, Dr. Christina Shembro, for joining me again. I'm sure we'll have you on again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Bye, everybody.